let's dive deeper into our use of algebra and trigonometry and look at also strengthening our understanding of trigonometric identities. So up to this point, these are the trigonometric identities that we have seen and we should know. So if you do not have these memorized, you must. And moreover, not only should you have them memorized, but you should be able to manipulate them mentally and therefore recognize things like 1 minus sine squared of theta is equal to cosine squared of theta or cosecant squared of theta minus 1 is cotangent squared of theta. Things like that. So let's look at just simplifying an expression that is written with trigonometric functions. So here we have cosine of beta times tangent of beta, and we want to simplify this expression. So we know that we can rewrite tangent of beta as sine of beta over cosine of beta. Now, cosine of beta and cosine of beta can cancel, and this leaves us with sine of beta. So now let's look at sine of theta times cotangent of negative theta. Now, if we look at cotangent of negative theta, it will be beneficial to remember that cotangent is an odd function. So remember, odd functions have this property. So therefore, we can take sine of theta, and that will be multiplied by negative cotangent of theta. Now, we did not factor out the negative from inside the argument. Instead, we use the property that cotangent is odd. So now we can take this, and we have sine of theta times negative cotangent of theta. That will be negative sine of theta times cotangent of theta. And then we can use a quotient identity. And negative sine of theta will be multiplied now by cosine of theta over sine of theta. And sine of theta will cancel and we are left with negative cosine of theta. Now, in this example, we are told to factor the expression. So you'll notice that sine squared of x is common to both terms. So this is equal to, I can factor out the sine squared of x, And that will leave cosecant squared of x minus 1. If, you have diff if you're having difficulty seeing that, take and distribute sine squared of x times cosecant squared of x. And that gives you this term. And then sine squared of x times negative 1 yields for us negative sine squared of x. So now we have sine squared of x and cosecant squared of x minus 1 is reminiscent of a Pythagorean identity. So remember that 1 plus cotangent squared of theta equals cosecant squared of theta. And that means that cosecant squared of x minus 1 is cotangent squared of x. And so now we have sine squared of x times cotangent squared of x. So now cotangent squared of x we can rewrite with a quotient identity. Cosine squared of x over sine squared of x. 
and again the sine squared of x is cancel and we are left with cosine squared of x. Now in this next example we are to multiply. Now whenever we multiply these two expressions this should remind us of a minus b a plus b which results Whenever we multiply a squared minus b squared, a difference of squares. So what does this end up being? Here a is 9, so we'd have 81. And then outside and inside would cancel in our foil because it's a difference of squares, minus 81 cosine squared of theta. Now you can almost tell that this is going to use a Pythagorean identity, but we need to factor out an 81. And that will leave us with 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So 1 minus cosine squared of theta is sine squared of theta. And thus we have our answer. Now here we are to multiply and use the basic identities to simplify. Let's go ahead and multiply. Let's start by multiplying the denominator. And you'll notice that in this situation we have something like we had in the last problem. a plus b and a minus b. So we have, when we multiply, a squared minus b squared. Or we could foil that out and just leave out the outside and inside because it's a difference of squares. So we have 1 minus cosine squared of theta. Now, because that's going to result in sine squared of theta, let's um, have a little foresight in this. And we have sine of theta. I'm not going to multiply out sine of theta and 1 minus cosine of theta because I want that sine of theta to cancel eventually. So sine of theta times 1 minus cosine of theta. And then the denominator can simplify to sine squared of theta. But sine of theta will cancel with one of the sine of thetas in the denominator. And so we have 1 minus cosine of theta in the numerator and in the denominator, we have sine of theta. In this example, we're going to get a common denominator and add these two fractions and write as a single fraction. So our common denominator will be the product of these two denominators. So our LCD is 1 plus secant of alpha times 1 minus secant of alpha. So let's go ahead and build up these denominators. So 1 plus secant of alpha needs to get multiplied by 1 minus secant of alpha. But if we multiply the denominator by that, of course we need to also multiply the numerator plus 1 over 1 minus secant of alpha. And likewise, we need to build that denominator up. And we'll multiply the denominator by 1 plus secant of alpha. And likewise, the numerator. So now, the first fraction becomes 1 minus secant of alpha over and if we multiply that denominator out to make use of our Pythagorean identities later, we get 1 minus secant squared of alpha. Likewise, our second fraction becomes 1 plus secant of alpha all over 1 minus secant squared of alpha. Now, if we add these two numerators, we get 2. And then this will be over 1 minus secant squared of alpha. But 1 minus secant squared of alpha is 
what? We know 1 plus tangent squared of alpha is secant squared of alpha. And so if I subtract secant squared from both sides, manipulate, move the tangent squared over as well, we get negative tangent squared of alpha. So we have 2 over negative tangent squared of alpha. Using our reciprocal identity, we now have negative 2 cotangent squared of alpha for our final answer.